Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your love tarot reading. We're going to talk about love, dating, romance, sex, anything that wants to come through in that arena. Please come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to learn something or better yourself. If the messages that come through for you don't resonate, feel free to push them aside. You may want to revisit them at a later date. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is, of course, optional advice or guidance, an energy check-in, see what's going on in your love life. Uh, so that being said, let's try and get you some helpful, insightful messages. And we're going to begin in just a second. One more card for Sagittarius. All right, so you got some nines and you've got some fours. So you've got some stability and then kind of desiring or wanting some, some kind of change. All right, so the bottom of your deck is the death card. Um, so that may be a timestamp uh, of Scorpio season. It's a card associated with Scorpio. It could also be that there's a Scorpio entering your life. Um, in fact, if I, if I kind of read it this way, it does look like there's a, 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 some sort of change or the influx or... I'm hearing, I'm hearing something else, but it's not quite coming clear, clearly to me. The, I don't know, almost like windfall of a new relationship coming through. It could be with a Scorpio or a Taurus, maybe, and it's like something that you really want to hang on to and move forward with and, and progress it. So that in itself seems like a very nice, easy-flowing message. So that might be for some of you. Um, you, you have some challenging cards, but like, I'm always here to not just give you problems, like hopefully work through it. So if you are kind of at a standstill in a relationship or sort of, Having, having some challenges, let's see if we can work through those a little bit together and get you some, some ideas. You do have two nights. Um, you have earth and water. Um, so trying to move forward and, and make progress and strides in your emotional life, your emotional intelligence, uh, as well as with romantic partnership. I feel like someone is trying to offer you their, their cup of love, if you will, with the Knight of Cups, but you're just not ready to take it uh, with this Five of Cups. It could be that you're uh, mourning the loss of something or someone. Maybe you're still uh, going through a breakup or a divorce or trying to um, make amends with, with something that, it, yeah, it feels like it was a, a missed opportunity or a misconnection. The thing with the Five of Cups, though, is that I always like to remind people you're only seeing sort of the negative side of it. Um, the Five of Cups always says that two things remain here, like two cups are still upright. So it's not this this storyline or scenario where all has been lost, certainly some things have been taken and we have to sort of make peace with the fact that something from this situation we might not get back. But again, Scorpio energy, we can always transform what we currently have into something new and, and revive life into it. Some of you may be mourning the loss of a, a relationship with a water sign, a Scorpio Cancer Pisces. Um, but then with that, it goes to the Eight of Swords. So there's a lot of sort of like self-sabotaging thoughts that's maybe keeping you guys apart or, or yes, something where you don't necessarily feel comfortable moving forward to reciprocate or, or make that offer or something of the sort. Um, <clears throat> so so it's, it's interesting. It's both. I see sort of needing to release something, but I also see sort of this challenging dynamic of wanting to accept or embrace something but not feeling ready to do it um these are two strong cards indicating kind of like fear and and kind of feeling like you're getting in your own way um and i never i never mean to be negative or or glass half empty or glass half yeah glass half full right um glass half empty whatever but yeah, the, those two cards next to each other are challenging, but like there's there's movement that's trying to come in uh, for, for your love life with the Knight of Cups here. So where is this coming from? I, I think holding on to something from the past and maybe putting up um, putting up walls in terms of letting new people in. Some of you just don't feel ready like you're you're ready for the next relationship yet. And what and what's interesting though is is for some of you, even though you don't feel ready, it's still kind of making its way in. I mean, we're entering into eclipse season, which for every zodiac sign, it's going to shake things up a lot. It, you know, it, it usually does. That's how eclipses work. So for better or worse, I do think there's opportunities for new connections, even if they're just like platonic. You know, it could be friendships coming in to sort of uh, get you to understand that there, there are still good things out there and there's a lot of new and wonderful and amazing people to meet. So, you know, keep, keep your chin up, keep your head held high um, because this, this period of confusion or loss or grieving um, 
it's totally valid to honor those emotions, but at some point you have to kind of recognize that it's not good to like drown in those emotions. Like we need to do something cathartic with that energy. I always say if you're an artist of any kind, that's a great time to, you know, journal or paint or play music or whatever it is you do to kind of have a healthy expression of, of those emotions that maybe kind of pent up or locked up inside you. <clears throat> I do feel like for some of you, there's a person who's already in your energy that is trying to reach out and, and open up their heart to you. And, uh, you know, they want to move in with you. They want to embrace you. They, they want to ask you out, whatever it is. In their head, it's like this really positive shift of energy of like, I want to move forward with them. Um, but you, Sagittarius, like you're giving them doubt, though, at the same time. It's almost like they're trying to break break through a brick wall, like it's just not happening. And for a lot of you, I do see you as the one putting up a brick wall or, or just kind of being, um, and this isn't a bad thing, but being very protective of your energy right now and not allowing people in. So to a certain degree, maybe you need to protect your energy because you are going through some healing, which is completely valid and, and awesome. Um, but at what point are those walls up past due? Like, at what point are we still keeping these walls up and these these boundaries and um, being closing ourselves off to new, again, new relationships of any kind when, you know, in some ways it's contradictory. It's like, I want to date and I want to get myself out there. But then when I have the opportunity to do that and connect with people, the walls come up. Um, so there may be some serious trust issues that you have in, in a relationship. And I'm sure that's, again, I, I don't mean that as a critique or a criticism. I'm sure it's for a valid reason. It's probably because you really opened up to someone and you felt like you got used and abused and you got your heart broken and somebody took advantage of your openness. And, you know, you gave you gave this person trust very easily and maybe learned that lesson the hard way. So with that, you might be a little bit more caution to let people into your world again, because, it, it, you know, part of this feels very fragile to me. Um, my poor Sagittarians. <clears throat> and, and also, this might be for the cross watchers, too, especially water and earth signs who are cross watching on their Sagittarius person. It's I, I see like this enthusiasm and this desire to, to really like go big and, and put your cards on the table and, and, you know, confess your desire to be with Sagittarius or try and move things along to the next level or or get some kind of commitment out of them. But I, that that storyline sort of ends in nine of swords. So either you're putting too much pressure on on Sagittarius or you yourself know that as much as you want that, it's not necessarily reciprocated at this time. And so you're kind of spinning out in your own head about, you know, how can I change this person's mind? Why don't they like me? And, and really, it, it has very little to do with that. I, I think the energy coming in on this is just people are in different places right now. So that's the main storyline I see coming through here. Um, for those who don't relate to that, let's see if we can get any other messages that want to come through. <clears throat> I, I think want, multiple people in the spread are having trouble letting their guard down and, and being vulnerable around other people. So that's just a general kind of lesson or, or message that the universe wants you to hear right now. Um, and I mean this in the most positive, like empowering way, but really check yourself. Uh, you know, why do you have your walls up? Why, you know, why are you so guarded? And do you even realize that you are? Um, because for those of you who already have a significant other or someone in your life, I feel like they're feeling very like left out in the cold. They're feeling very much like isolated or you're not communicating with them and telling telling them what's wrong or what you need. And a lot of that like guilt or shame, it's being like turned inward for your person um, because they think they're doing something wrong. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. There could be uh, some financial financial struggles that are sort of uh, playing a heavy role in this relationship and, and the health of, of a, 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 you know, what could be a very positive relationship. There could be some financial issues coming into it. Maybe there's a significant medical bill or, or a car bill, or I, I don't know what that is, but it could be that the influx of money is now very much stabilized. Um, or maybe not stabilized, but the influx of money is <clears throat> it, it's immediately spoken for. It's like it's going to different avenues and we, we don't sort of have that same freedom to whatever, you know, travel or go do this the way we used to be. There's 
there's some energy with Virgo here of needing to be responsible and organized and detail oriented and sort of, yeah, I'm just getting the idea that certain things are already allocated for. Um, and, and so for some of you, it feels like your world is sort of closing in a little bit. If it does actually feel a little bit claustrophobic and some of you may actually struggle quite literally with claustrophobia. Um, <clears throat> Or within a relationship, again, whether whether it's new or you've been together for a while, that idea of feeling like the walls are closing in on you. Some of you just feel like you don't have the same freedom and the ability to live life the way you used to. Um, some of that is mental. Some of that is just your your fear sort of triggering you of, of, you know, what if I get stuck and I can't get out? Others of you, it is valid in the sense that, yeah, now that you're in this this relationship, things have changed a little bit. The, the narrative has changed and it's no longer this, what do I feel like doing today? It's like, you know, what do I feel like doing? And then I need to consult with my partner to see if that works. Like there is kind of a, you know, it's a two-way street. Not every decision can be made solely on, on you and your heart and what you desire. And so maybe there is more or less more conversations happening where you're starting to realize it is very much like a... a two-person decision. And I'm not saying everything, of course, but there isn't that same uh, careless or dare I even say reckless or that ease of just like uh, making decisions for yourself and not having to consult anyone else. I, there's almost like a loss or a mourning of, of like the bachelorette or the bachelor lifestyle. And it's not necessarily bad, but there's like this, this need to sort of get comfortable with, with this with this change of lifestyle. <clears throat> and that could be what the death card represents as well. Uh, it, it's bringing more of your psychological fears uh, to a head. Um, and in Scorpio season for my Sagittarius risings, right? Scorpio in theory rules your 12th house, which is about sort of our own hidden depths. Um, it can be about secrets. It can be about, it can be about a lot of things, but it can also be like our own self undoing, like ways that we self sabotage without even fully realizing it, you know, without consciously, you know, participating in that. Um, so yeah, it could be some icky stuff kind of comes up to the surface in conversation. And really it's just bringing a magnifying glass on, on things that you, in theory, w would like to work on. Um, so it is a good thing, even though it's not the, the easiest thing to, uh, to go through. Um, I think it's important to spend time with those feelings and to work through them. I think that's what this could be too. The Knight of Cups to the Wheel of Fortune is like the fact that we can identify the yucky feeling is half the battle. Then it's deciding what we're going to do with it, how we're going to react or how we are not going to react, how we're going to like calm or pacify that doubt or that anxiety, knowing that maybe it's not coming from a place of truth. Maybe it's, again, those fears sort of telling us this false narrative. Um <clears throat> There could be another Sagittarius in the mix here too, who really wants to hold on to you and and wants to make it work, or or is making a proposal to you um, of some kind. There could be a Sagittarius who's already in your network that may come forward and, and ask you out or flirt with you a little bit. And the thing is, I'm not sure you necessarily know this, but I feel like this person has, has had their eye on you for quite some time. So it's new. It might be new to you, but there you've kind of been a, a main player in their life. They just haven't necessarily moved forward with asking you out or, or again, taking it, the relationship to the next step. With Knight of Pentacles, that specific storyline looks like it, it poses... Um, success in, in some ways, like it, it could be setting itself up for a healthy, successful relationship. Um, Four of Pentacles, though, in, in the center, I, you know, it, it's not my most, most exciting card. It's certainly not a, a bad card by any means, but it's just kind of like stability. It, it's it's like getting by, but that we don't have a lot of extra energy to extend or, or give out. It's not, it's not a super generous card. In some ways, it, it can feel like clinging on to dear life, like just getting by. Um, for other people, it's it's comfortable energy, but it's withheld. Do you see how like his his arms are very much like wrapped up tight? It's um it's not it's not taking up space. It can be I don't know. I just read that card as sometimes being very vulnerable or maybe a little bit uncomfortable or or this idea of being fearful of change or fear, fearful of what's ahead. But the Wheel of Fortune says, rest assured, change is coming. And typically the Wheel of Fortune is about beautiful blessings. There could be a major move on the horizon and you're kind of either second guessing it or just having doubts of what it's going to look like on the other side. And the death card again kind of says like, well, we don't know, but it's, it, it is going to change. It is going to change a lot, but that doesn't mean it's going to be bad. I think we have to be open minded to all the good that could come from this. Mm -mm. 
again, I, another message I keep, I, I think I've said this already, but I feel like a water sign is, is trying to get a gauge on where you're at. It's like they're trying to get just get a pulse on, on where you're at and if you're going to move forward, if you're going to ask them out again. They seem to be sort of at a, at a crossroads of wanting to move forward with you, but feeling like the energy is blocked or stuck. Um, and yeah, it, like it, it's at a standstill. And I, I see that storyline in a couple different directions. So it doesn't have to be with a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. But I definitely think that you, you have one around you that is like, what's Sagittarius up to? And that could that message could go in reverse. So in regards to that, the Six of Cups, yeah, okay. So it's probably someone you have a history with, or maybe you connected with on the past on a more inti intimate level. Maybe it's a longstanding friendship, but yeah, it's like someone is is really hoping and wishing that it's going to move in a positive direction. I like it's a test to their faith. I'm getting. It's like they they want to put all all the stock in you, Sagittarius, but they're kind of like. Is this what's healthy for me and, and um, my my mental health, essentially? Yeah, it's like someone someone puts you up on a pedestal and sees you as, as their wife or, or their husband or, you know, the Cinderella story, the Ten of Cups. It's like all our wishes and dreams coming true. But my goodness, it's it's a challenge. And so where where's the other energy on this? The tower. So there could be a shocking or sudden sudden revelation that you have feelings for someone from your past. I'm not saying it has to be the same storyline, but I, I almost see this as reverting back like Wheel of Fortune rather than being future oriented, which typically Sagittarius is very future oriented. But, you know, everybody's a little bit different. Um, the tower can sometimes bring upheaval. And so I, I, I don't know why I'm just getting this light bulb moment or this epiphany that you're still holding on to something from the, the past, which is why you're not able to fully open yourself up to, to new connections or the future or whoever you're with currently, if, it, if it's kind of like on the rocks or, or stagnant or, or has stopped growing, it's because deep down there's, there's still this holding on to something from the past. And maybe you envision someone as your, you know, sorry, Cinderella story or your, oh, I can't silence my phone. Sorry, guys. Was that a sign? Maybe you envision someone as your perfect person or your Cinderella story or, yeah, I, I don't know, something from the past that you always hoped would come back around. And I almost, again, get this sense of lying to yourself of like, no, that was in the past and it could never be. And yet it's still kind of on your mind. It's like you're not fully able to open yourself up and and I'm hearing the word realize, realize yourself, realize new, new romantic relationships, because I don't know, at minimum with the tower, there might be unfinished business or unsettled energy. I'm hearing words like karma. So I don't know, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want to move forward. But I think the major question is, you know, are you opening yourself up? And, and if not, why? Um, and again, there's no rush to do so if it has to do with your own healing journey. Um, but I do sense that you're sacrificing or missing out on good things because of the energy that sort of surrounds that. Anything else we need to know for Sagittarius? I see you at a crossroads with a Sagittarius too, and that might be in the future. I'm not even sure that's at the present moment, but I see you kind of be needing to make a decision about another Sagittarius or on the fence about approaching one, asking one out, or, or the idea of reciprocating those feelings. Um, in the future, there may be a Capricorn or an Aries that comes into the picture that wants to make an offer with you. Um, it, and it, that relationship may struggle with mental health issues a little bit, whether it's on your end or their end. Um, and I very rarely get this message, but there could be uh, issues with, with um, breaking the law or something to do with jail or prison or a court date or something. Again, that's not for most of you, but something about this eight of swords, it almost feels like a prison. So for some of you, it could be, you know, metaphorically being stuck in the mental prison, right? Not, not knowing how to move forward. But others of you, there, there could be someone that you're waiting on or, or hoping for a relationship with, but they've had issues with the law or issues, I, I don't know, with substance abuse, or there's a reason why maybe you had to move on from it, but in your heart, you're still kind of holding on to it. 
the sun. Well, that poses a good energy. I like the sun very much. That's probably, aside from the Wheel of Fortune, that's probably the most uh, uplifting card that we've seen. Uh, the sun always brings warmth and attention. It's about honoring your authentic self and what you truly want in life. It does start with, you know, loving yourself enough to to go out there and, and live your truth, you know, even if, uh, you know, people don't approve of who's in your love life. There also could be topics or conversation regarding children, too, with those two things coming out. Um, honoring your own inner child, giving, you know, your inner child what it needed as a child, if that makes sense, that maybe as an adult, you're still struggling to sort of make that link and connect the pieces. It's a very strong, like, psychological therapy type, you know, doing the internal work here. Others of you, the topic of conver uh, the topic of conversation with a partner could be about having children or moving into a role as a parent. Um, and again, I don't see yes or no. I see a lot of contemplation about what that would look like and trying to envision a scenario where you know that that could or could not work. Um, and you don't need to rush the decision. You need to you need to trust that you know what's right for you and honor your intuition, especially with the Knight of Cups. But now that I'm looking at it, you do have a lot of like childlike energy here. You know, Jupiter is very much linked to to children. So, you know, it could be in, in you know, the coming, I would say, few months. Children may play a more prominent role in your life one way or another. All right, Sagittarius, I'm going to leave you with that. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.